Doing FIFA. Uh, we can, all right, we can... <laughs> and we are live. <laughs> uh, welcome to another episode of uh, World Club of the Fortnite, where we uh, each episode we take time to discuss a club of uh, a football club, a soccer club around the world um, that maybe doesn't get too much spotlight usually. Um, I think we decided Doug is usually going to pick clubs that speak Spanish, and I usually pick clubs that are going to speak German. Although, you know, we can pick whatever we want because we make the rules. Um, so, Doug, why don't you tell us what you have picked for this week? Yeah, so it might be that um, I don't do a lot of Spanish-speaking clubs for a while. Um, so I'm, huh? I said that's fair. You can oh, pick yes, whatever you want. Yes. So uh, I'm going to Botswana next year, 2020. And I thought I would just learn something about their football. And it's been really interesting. Uh, we will talk about other clubs. So I'm sure like the league structure and all of that will come about. Um, so let's not, you know, delve too much into um, that. One thing I have discovered though, just about that's, that's interesting is I don't, I don't know what language that they speak, but I've just started following like um, Botswana football Facebook and like, it's, it's like some sort of pigeon where like I recognize some of the words are English and I'm like the rest of that is like definitely not English. So um, uh, it's it's difficult. So anybody who knows anything about Botswana football that would like to uh, come on and help rep their club, um, then I would love you to uh, to do that because it's very difficult to find information in English about these clubs. Um, and I realized that I didn't say the name of the club um, that we're going to start with in Botswana. It's the obvious club to start with with Botswana, and it's Township Rollers. Okay, obvious for those people who might be interested in soccer in Botswana. Me personally, never dove into it, so I had no idea that was the club to naturally start with. Um, You'll find out why. Okay, awesome. Uh, so do you want to jump into that, or you want to tell us when this club was founded, something else about this club? Yeah, so we'll start with the founding. Um, okay. It was formed by the Public's Work Department, and that's something that you see throughout Botswana, is that they kind of like, I guess, the old Russian clubs, they're, they're sort of tied to um, industries and such. Um, but this one was the Public Works Department, and uh, it was in the, I don't know how to pronounce this, but the Beculond Protectorate, that was in um, when Botswana was not yet Botswana. And right about the time they changed their name is when it became a country. I don't remember that date off the top of my head. Um, but uh, they were started as in 1961 as um, a club called the Mighty Tigers. And then they changed their name to Township Rollers in 1965. And then you think about it, Public Works Department township rollers i don't know what they're rolling through the township but i'm thinking like making roads and then they have those big things yeah. to like push the asphalt down that's what i have in my head i don't know if that's An the case asphalt roller i don't know yeah that's, yeah that's what i'm imagining right now i don't maybe know they that. roll joints i don't I, know I they don't, roll something uh, so. i don't know on that one yeah <laughs> uh, it's not it, jamaica so probably not it, uh but. so anybody who uh wants to point out our lack of knowledge botswana was founded in 1960 um so right after it apparently the next year <clears throat> was when this would have happened um so uh why okay so you mentioned this you kind of led us into this um why is this the club for us to start with in botswana yeah so they are the largest sporting institution in botswana um they have over two hundred thousand followers on facebook which i don't have numbers to compare that but um, that seems it sounds like that sounds like a lot yeah it sounds like a lot <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, they've won the league 15 times, which I mean, 15 is a lot even in England, but you got to think this league started. Um, well, the National League started in 1978 in their their league that was like a Southern League that didn't have any Northern teams um, that started in the 60s and they won it 15 times. And that's more than double the team that has the second most. So this is not like a Manchester United Liverpool situation where like top two teams are very close. Like this is, they are the team and they're the Yankees of Botswana basically. Um, although interestingly, um, as far as I can tell, it's a completely um, amateur slash semi-pro league. Um, I, you know, I don't know much about that at all, but um, 
So comparing to them, the Yankees, they're not exactly like buying players in that respect. Um, but they, they have also won um, their FA Cup um, six times, which is tied for the top. They've won something called the Gilby's Cup three times. I don't know anything about that, and I don't think it's important to know anything about it. Um, and then they've won the Mascom Top 8 Cup, which I believe is fairly new competition um, twice in 2012 and 2018. Oh, and um, I wanted to mention as far as their leagues, 15 is too many to, to read out, but um, just, you know, they're, they're currently very successful. Um, 2010, 11, 14, 16, 17, and 18. So three on the trot and several in the last few years. Um, but, you know, they do go back um, and – you know, have won it several times in the past as well. Yeah, it looks like they dominated the 80s, or at least the early 80s pretty well. Yeah, and they have won in 87 too, yeah. so. I wonder if that's why they have so much. I mean, there's 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 kind of two schools of thought when it comes to a lot of followers. They either have a lot of past success or they have a lot of recent success, and they kind of have both right now. Well, they're yeah. also based in the capital, um, oh, which no. I kind of assume is the largest city. I don't know that for a fact, but um, it is um, certainly one of the largest cities in the country. So just from that aspect, um, of course, there's other clubs in the capital, which we'll find out about. Yeah. Um, but that that certainly helps their their calls there. And they've, they've been in African competition. So like people outside of Botswana, um, at least that follow the African game, um, would have known about them. So they're the 12, five and 19 in African competition. So if you do the math on that, they're not, well, a, that's obviously not super successful, more losses than wins. Um, but also they haven't been in like the African competitions proper very much. That's not a whole lot of games, um, you know, over the years to, to amass. Um, but their best showing came in 2006 in the calf calf confederation cup and calf is the, um, Confederation of African football. football. I don't know what CAF stands for, but it's it's CONCACAF, UEFA. It's that level of organization, and um, but that's the CAF Confederation Cup is their their NIT, their Europa League, the second tier um, competition. But they um, back in two thousand six, they had a good run there. Mm. Well, that's good. Uh, it is the Confederation of African Football. Um, which is was pretty obvious. Uh, so currently, I just took a quick glance. Currently, they are leading their uh, league again this year. Um, without going into too much detail, do they play or do you know if they play uh, 30 games? It looks like they have 16 teams. So that would be 15 opponents playing them twice, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's that's the case. And uh, that league table that I have there was last updated um, last week, so it doesn't have um, today's games on it. You can find it's actually pretty easy to find um, online the more up to date than Wikipedia. But that's where I was looking. So I just kept that link. But um, as of last weekend, they were top of the table and um, they still would be no matter the results because they had a four point cushion. Yeah. Um, so well good stuff good stuff i'm i'm curious now um to see some more of these teams to see kind of like how this this league structure works uh it says that it's 18 19 so i'm assuming it it is yeah in August. It the year. Yeah, yeah okay um so that's that's good to know we'll probably get into that more uh, as we look in these teams um now, I'm curious because I've never heard of any player from Botswana myself uh, that I can remember. So are there notable players that I should know or just notable? I, I, for probably them? not. I mean, not, I wouldn't expect the – I mean, the the team, the country is – they've never qualified up to the World Cup, which, I mean, good, great players can come from teams that – aren't in the world cup, but um, it does give you some indication of their um, status as a footballing nation. Um, and they've only qualified uh, once for the African cup of nations. So that I think tells you even more yeah. um, in 2012, they did the one time, but um, I'm not sure why, but a whole bunch of years, they didn't even enter for qualification for world cup and African cup of nations. And it's weird because Botswana is, generally considered like 
one of the best run countries in Africa. You know, like corruption index is really high or low, depending. There's not very much corruption. <laughs> I'm not sure which way the index goes, but uh, it's it's generally seen as like a uh, you know a great democracy. And um, but they just uh, you know, and they have like diamond money, so you would think that. Um, but I my suspicion is it's just not very well populated. Um, you know, diamonds come from like mountains i guess and so um you need like mines and you know space to mine things so um probably a lot of that land is just um not a lot going on um not a lot of people that is so um well, they but a, I, it, it says their population's around uh two and a two and a quarter million so yeah that's what, nothing that's the twin yeah. cities so that's less than the twin cities i mean yeah. like that's so um you know, and, if and, you look at a map, it's not a it's not a small area, but yeah, I was just assuming it didn't have a large population. So. Yeah, I was just I was trying to compare that to uh, um, a European, it was like European nation. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the metro area, yeah, but I was I was thinking of like a nation to compare it to uh, in Europe is um, like a Slovenia or Slovakia, one of those that small, or are they even um, bigger than that. I'm thinking um, I, for some reason I'm thinking like Slovenia is is near that size. I could be way off. Of course, Slovenia is a mountain mountainous country. Um, two million is the is Slovenia's population. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. they've made the World Cup. So I mean, it's right. It's certainly talking, possible. We're, we're talking about potential, you know, uh, well, not millennia, but centuries of established government versus a country that was founded in. 50 years yeah. ago so yeah i mean and it. iceland made the world cup and they have like less than three hundred and fifty thousand yeah. people so, um, so it, it, it's not a population size that's the problem but I, yeah well it doesn't, doesn't help doesn't help yeah yeah, yeah. But, uh, um so but yeah so i did there are some some names that like if you followed like south african um the south african league which is considered one of the better leagues in africa not probably not the best probably egypt is probably considered the best mm -hmm. um but certainly the money is really good in south africa which is a topic for another another day but uh they had um township rollers had the guy who has played the most for the national team with 50 caps uh, I'm just going to call him Jomo because that's what people call him. Um, they had the uh, top score from their league in 2010 with 31 goals. And just to give you some uh, indication of how hard it is to like find information in English, the this guy Terrence Mendoza, who is the leading goal scorer, he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Um, so. But um, somebody knows that he's the leading scorer. Um, I couldn't find I couldn't find a list of like every leading score of every year. That it's really patchy. Like some years I have information for leading scorer, some years I don't. But um, they've had the league player of the season, um, Cambelo Dembe, uh, who plays in South Africa, um, and they had this guy Musele in 2014. Um, they had Joel um, Bogorosi. Um, third all-time in caps and the all-time leading goal scorer for the national for the Botswana national team. Um, this guy who's last I don't know if they do last name first name, but I'm guessing based on Joel coming first, the last name you know they'd use a um, Anglo-Saxon naming mm -hmm. convention first last. Um, but it, his last name is Gabon Among. Um, he's sixth all-time in caps in Botswana, um, and he was the highest-paid athlete in Botswana in 2011. Um, this guy, NATO or NATO, it's spelled like NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, <laughs> but I don't know how they pronounce it. Um, he's eighth all time in caps for Botswana. Um, Shire Letso, I'm just going to go, maybe it's Cheshire Letso. Um, maybe he goes as a hobbit for Halloween. That would I be super know, cool. Maybe. Yeah, um, he's ninth all time in caps for Botswana. Um, Mafoko, 10th uh, all time in, ca in caps for Botswana. So you can start to kind of see this trend. They have a lot of guys who play for yeah. the Botswana national team. Um, Ramat from Jerome. Kwane is, is the end of that, but yeah. <laughs> Jerome. His name is Jerome. Um, he's the all-time leading scorer for Botswana. He played for the Rollers. Um, and then uh, Mol Wan Twan. Twa. Mol Wan Twa. 
um, number six all-time leading score for Botswana. So like a lot of really prominent guys from the national teams have rolled through the township. Yeah. This is a conversation probably for another day as far as like how, how, um, it, how they become like, like their train. I, I don't want to know. Training's not the right word, but how do they become soccer players in the first place? Like, uh, you know, like they don't, I don't know if they have like academies or anything, but these guys probably are growing up in the city and uh, where the club is in the capital. And they're probably like playing on the streets or, or just whoever's playing around. And then, uh, well, just, just because they're, you know, amateur teams doesn't mean they don't have an academy. I mean, so um, Minneapolis city has a U23 team. Um, and they're going to be starting a U19 team. And of course, that's not like Little Kids Academy, but I mean, that's certainly the direction that Minneapolis City is going. And, you know, Minneapolis City that we talked about last week, um, they've only been around since 2016 was their first first league season. So that's what they've been able to do in three years um, or four years, I guess. Um three and a half, whatever. Four seasons hasn't started. Um, and so they've had years and years to, to develop yeah. academies. Well, so. my, my point was kind of like how they would be kind of fast-tracked to go through if they were from the capital to go through this club and to be on the national team. Yeah, and yeah. Whereas outside the city, they might not have that kind of fast Yeah, we will definitely and, talk about that in a, in future episodes. Yeah. So hold um, on to that thought. So kind of like our, our little bit here at the end is always to talk about like if they have any any rivalries or any uh, derbies, um, you know, just a, a plug. The uh, Merseyside Derby is tomorrow. Um, so I think that it's always fun to kind of end off on this note. So were you able yeah. to find any derbies that they – Yeah, and one thing about derbies is so the English tradition is that derby is local. And I think that's been kind of expanded because our country is so – Bass. huge in yeah. comparison to England. And so like we talk about like the Cascadia Derby. So it's still local, but we're talking about like hundreds of miles between yeah. Seattle and Portland, for example. Um, and so like, to me, they say like Manchester United, Liverpool is not a Derby, but like, it's kind of like the Northwest Derby to me. I don't know. That's the way I think of it. But um, you know, people sort of like rivalry versus Derby. Um, but both of these actually, they're, they're true, um, true derbies. Um, there's, you know, well, at least again, I guess they're, yeah, they're both in the city. Um, I'm not sure like as far as like townships and neighborhoods and such where, how closely they are located. And it's interesting cause there's some, um, some people say that their derby with, um, Gabarone United is like the big derby. Um, and it may be in terms of like money and prestige and, you know, just length of time that it's existed. Um, that may well be the big one. Um, but it sounds like that the Derby with, um, Mochuti center chiefs is just nasty. So kind of like the Minneapolis city Duluth thing. Um, you know, like our local Derby was with like, you know, with VSLT and like, yeah, it's a big deal. People go to that game because it's easy to go to. Um, and it's, you know, they're a fun team to watch. And so like, it's a big deal in that respect because it's like who owns the city, um, but it's not nasty. Um, and so I think that's kind of what they have going on with uh, this other team. And some people say that it's the, the bigger of the two. Um, rather, um no, and I guess it's just partially because of the success too. And again, yeah. it's kind of like the Duluth thing um, that well, and, you know, and, and the Liverpool Manchester thing as well. Like yeah. Liverpool and Everton are is the derby, but the the Liverpool Man U games are usually the more nasty ones. Um, in fact, I think they call the Merseyside derby like the friendly derby. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because that has to do with success as well between Liverpool and, right. and Manchester United. For sure. Um, I I didn't find any information about this last one, any sort of, like, um, nitty-gritty on, like, 
the rivalry, like basically anything about it, just that they were mentioned that extension gunners are also um, one of their, one of their rivals. So I don't know if that's a success thing um, or, I mean, but at some level, I mean, nobody is their rival because nobody's even close to the number of championships that they have. But of course that kind of comes with time, you know, maybe there's a team that's like finishing second all the time now. And so that's become a rivalry um, in recent years. But um but yeah, Extension Gunners is another team that, um, you know, if you're looking at Botswana football, um, it's a team to know. So. Right. Okay. Well, maybe we will talk about them in the future. Um, you got any more plugs before we wrap things up, Doug? Well, we um, had mentioned that um, Boca Juniors was going to be this week, and that's actually going to be the next show, not this yes, show. Which so, will be um, supposedly two weeks from today. Yeah, yeah. And um, we have a guest and um, we've just been, you know, trying to find time when everybody can get on um, is not always easy. So um, that is totally cool because like I've got plenty of clubs to talk about. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot out there. Yeah. There's a lot out there. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us uh, for this episode of uh, World Cup of the Fortnite. We will join you in another fortnight uh, with our next episode. Um, until then, see you later. <laughs>